This was a land grab. That's all it was, pure and simple. Just like Israel is still snatching land away today from other people and adding it to their own sovereign territory, back in 1967, Israel was stealing lands from other nations. First they stole the Gaza Strip, then they stole the entire Sinai Peninsula from Egypt, next they stole the territory called the West Bank from their neighbor Jordan. And most controversially, Israel grabbed East Jerusalem from Jordan, including all of the holy Arab sites. Talk about kicking off the Arabs. Remember, up until this point, Jerusalem was not part of Israel. The capital of Israel was in Tel Aviv, but the Zionists wanted Jerusalem. They wanted all of it. And by the third day of the Six-Day War, they had gotten it. Radio Cairo's false news about Egyptian military successes has reached Arab Jerusalem, where it has an electrifying effect. What's the radio saying about what's happened? 23 uh, for the for the Israel. 23? 23 now. Airplane. Yes, airplane. Airplane shut down? Yes. By this time, I had left the newspaper and run over to the radio station just to see what was going on. Because all they were doing was broadcasting military music and shouting slogans. And I remember saying to them, they're going to hit this place. And the head of the station saying, because he had some military experience, the head of the station. We were probably the only two people who had military experience. He had served in the Jordan Army. I had served in the American Army. Nobody else. That was the other amazing thing for me. Everybody's clamoring war for war. All the young men, and none of them knew how to fire a rifle. And I was cautioned, don't talk that way. You were suggesting that the, the united might of the Arabs are not going to overwhelm Israel. They're going to come in here. How can you even think that way? The truth is that on the first day, our morale was very high because all the information we got was that the Arabs were victorious. Israel jammed our military communications so we were getting all our information from the radio and the Egyptian radio Cairo was giving wrong information. In Amman, Jordan's King Hussein receives a message from Israel. He appeals to King Hussein and to other neighbors to stay their hands and Israel was to do likewise. But King Hussein can do little. He has signed a mutual defense treaty with his Arab neighbors, and his army is now under the control of an Egyptian, General Riyadh. We were fighting the war on the basis that it was an Arab joint effort. This is why the Egyptian general's views prevailed. The Arab war plan calls for the Egyptian and Jordanian armies to cut Israel in half. But neither King Hussein nor General Riyadh have any real information about the progress of the war. Just public lies from Radio Cairo and private lies from the very top. Nasser calls the king and tells him that his planes are attacking Israel. He urges Hussein to seize as much territory as possible before a UN ceasefire. <laughs> Minutes after this phone call, Jordanian guns and mortars start to shell the Israeli half of Jerusalem. This is the first attack on Israeli territory. There's been hundreds of wounded by uh, ambulance and also by helicopter. There's a helicopter landing field over there. Only three hours into the war with Egypt, the war has now expanded to include Jerusalem. The future of the holy city, sacred to Muslims, Christians, and Jews, will be decided by force of arms in a battle that will resonate for generations.